So what separates the best research scientists from the rest? Is it genius, just luck, uh, some sort of special educational philosophy, um, uh, an acquired skill, is there some secret sauce? Um, uh, I, these are important questions for all scientists, but especially for trainees, for people that are students, postdocs, um, uh, early stage investigators. Uh, what is it that really makes the difference in the best scientists? Um, and, I, and I would say that there's really no secret that the best scientists are doing what attracted all of us to, to science in, in the beginning, and that is the um, excitement of discovery, that, that the best scientists are reaching for the big discoveries. Um, this means taking risks, uh, imagining uh, the way that something could work, and then choosing to take uh, the pathways that leave the uh, safe approaches behind and try something bold. Um, uh, to recognize that the idea of risk is what's really behind the, the, the joy of discovery. And it's uh, those risks that got us all into this business to begin with. So uh, Francois Jacob, the award Nobel laureate um, uh, molecular geneticist uh, that really helped launch the whole field of molecular genetics, genetics uh, wrote in his autobiography about um, uh, the idea of, of safe science and risky science in a, in a way that I think is particularly powerful and profound. Um, and so it's worth looking and thinking a bit about what Jacob said. So he said that day science calls into play arguments that mesh like gears results that have the force of certainty, conscious of its progress, proud of its past, sure of its future, day science advances in light and glory. Good stuff. But night science, by contrast, night science wanders blind. It hesitates, it stumbles, recoils, sweats, wakes with a start. Doubting everything, it is forever trying to find itself, pull itself back together. Night science is a sort of workshop of the possible, where what will become the building material of science is worked out. Pretty strong stuff, good stuff. So how do we become night scientists? That's the question. Um, uh, it's, it's undoubtedly true that there are special scientists who do special things. I don't deny that. But the more interesting point is that there are, uh, there's a big element of acquired skill in doing night science. So that's the point I'd like to think about with you. And to do that, we have to think a bit about how we learn to be scientists. Uh, how do we learn to be independent? And independent? What does that mean? Um, and, and so to do that, it's worth going back and thinking a bit about our research training, our education. Um, and, and I think that it's fair to say that research a research training um, environment at its best is an environment that immerses the student, uh, the postdoc, the new investigator, um, in this great sea of terrific uh, science, terrific investigation across a broad range, especially in biology now that a field is developing so uh, dynamically. Uh, this kind of breadth that now expands into the physical sciences and computation and engineering and mathematics uses those concepts and principles to be able to um, uh, think about biological problems is the kind of environment that we would want to be immersed in for the very best training. So there's that level of providing a general liter literacy for all students. And then I'd say that there's a set of skills, four of them, uh, that are really uh, uh, primary in establishing how it is that we could become um, great independent scientists. Three of them are, are kind of pathway, slot, uh, pathway um, um, uh, points, skills. Um, one is to the ability to identify an important problem, to really sift through the problems in biology and identify those that are important to move forward as opposed to those that um, can, can uh, sit for a while until uh, other uh, uh, advancements are made. 
The second is the capacity to develop hypotheses that drive the design of experiments, that, that allow a big problem to be broken down into pieces that can be experimentally tested and verified or disproved. The third is the capacity to select from amongst the results of experiments those that will be pursued and separated from those that will be left behind. So um, uh, those are the three primary skills. And then there's the fourth one, and that is the capacity to, in each of those three, identifying a problem, breaking into experiments, and pursuing results, to recognize that, in fact, there's a branch point at each of them between taking a safe route and taking a risky route. So how is it that we learn these four key skills? I think we can take uh, wisdom from the ad campaign and that says, just do it, right? Or from the fact that we all go to the gym and we learn how to um, uh, acquire a skill in the gym uh, is simply by repetition, doing reps, all right? So just do it and do reps. And uh, the amazing thing about science is that we do, in fact, through the process of repeating a, a skill, uh, become better at it and gain confidence that we can do it well. And the remarkable thing about science is that we are uh, surrounded by, immersed in, uh, this uh, opportunity to be doing reps all the time. So doing science is like living in the gym. Every paper we read, every seminar we go to, every hallway conversation we have with a friend uh, about experiments, every meet scientific meeting that we go to, offers multiple opportunities for us as students of science to ask, is this, uh, is this the problem that I would choose to work on? Is this the experiment that I would have designed to test a, this question? Would I have followed the results in this direction in order to pursue the problem? Or would I have done it in a different way? So we can ask these questions, do these reps, not only about our own work, which is crucial, but about everything around us. We're immersed in this opportunity to be able to do the repetitions that can move us toward the capacity of being uh, terrific independent scientists. And within each of those then is the, 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 uh, the opportunity to be able to choose that branch between the safe approach, the safe problem, the safe experiment, the safe result, and the risky one that may lead to something we just didn't expect or don't, don't understand at present. So um, uh, I think that much of our training does a good job at those first three skills of recognizing problems, designing experiments, and choosing results. But I find it distressing that, in fact, there is a tendency to discourage, uh, especially students and postdocs and assistant professors, from taking risks that we're in fact advised against taking risks. We're told to play it safe, to hold back, to be a little conservative, to wait until um, we're established, um, to wait until we're secure in our positions before we start out to take risks. So this is a little bit like being asked to accomplish a very difficult skill in the gym, if you will, without doing any reps, just walk in and do it. Right? That's hard and scary, and in my view, is, uh, tends to move us as a field, as individuals, toward a lifetime of, of day science, according to Francois Jacob. So why should we take risks? I think the answer is clear, that, that, that that um, uh, taking risk, risk in fact, is at the heart of discovery. And discovery is the reason that we're all trying to do science. When should we take risks? When is the right time to do night science? The answer is now. It's always time to do night science. Every day 
is the right time to do night science.